Welcome to the fourth grade three-dimensional solids flipped video. First, we're gonna start with our vocabulary. Please make sure that you have your homework with you so you can follow along. The first word is vertex. A vertex is the point where three or more edges meet. And if you look, here is an edge, this is an edge, and this is an edge. Where those three meet is a vertex. The plural of vertex is vertices. So we, as you can see, this solid has lots of vertices. Then we're moving on to our next word. So make sure that you fill in vertex on your homework. Anytime you need to pause this video, you can pause it anytime and fill it in, which is the benefit of doing a flipped video in the class. So face. Face is one of the plane figures that makes up space makes up a space figure. That's a face. Basically, it's a fancy way of saying whatever the shape is that you've made up. So if you look, here is a square. And there on the back is another square. And all of those are the faces of this shape. So fill that in on your homework. Next, we have edge. Edge is a straight line segment that enter the intersection of two faces of a solid figure, the place where faces come together or meet. Here is a face and here's a face. Where those two faces meet is this edge. Here's a face and here's a face and this is another edge. So there you go. That's our vocabulary. Make sure that you pause and fill in your, your, your vocabulary. And we're going to move on to some of the different types of solids that we're going to be learning. First, we have a rectangular prism. The rectangular prism has six rectangular faces, and some of them are very hard to see. Here's one, there's two, three, four, five at the top, and this makes six. So you can see those rectangular faces and we will have an actual solid in class that you can see and it's easier to count them. But I also want you to remember that it has six so that if you're asked about this on a quiz, you will know that this is going to be six rectangular faces. It has 12 edges and the edges are a bit easier to see. You can see those. And then eight vertices and you can easily see the vertices on this shape. You will be having a quiz on this video on Friday. So I want you to make sure that you're watching this video as many times as you need to and following along because I want you to do well in the quiz. And if you don't do well in the quiz, remember that we're going to have reteaching opportunities in the class. So please fill this in on the attributes side of your homework. And I want you to make sure that you're doing this because again, we're going to have a quiz over this. Next, we have a cube. The cube is very similar to the rectangular prism, and it also has six faces, but these are square faces this time, and it has 12 congruent edges and eight vertices. Next, we have a rectangular and square pyramid. What makes these two different is their bases. So if you look at the base, this face right here is a rectangle. The base of this pyramid is a square, and that's what makes them different. So anytime you see a pyramid, the bottom face is going to let you know what type of pyramid it is. This one has one rectangular face or one square face, four congruent triangular faces, eight edges, and five vertices. So make sure you fill this in on your homework. Here we have a cone. I'm going to go back really quickly to the rectangular pyramid. This is a vertex at the top. Notice how it has faces that are coming together to the vertex. Here is a cone. A cone does not have a vertex. It has a point because it does not have any faces that are meeting together. It has one circular base, one point, and one curved surface. This is a cylinder. This has one curved surface and two circular bases. And last, we have a sphere. And a sphere just has one curved side. And you can see how 
all the sides come up together. It's really interesting whenever you look at it in this perspective. So pause this video and fill those in because I know I went through those quickly, but I want you to fill those in on your homework and then we're going to move on to how to find the volume of a rectangular prism or cube. This formula only works for the volume of a rectangular prism or cube. It does not work for any of the other solids. To find this, here's our formula. Length times width times height. And here you need to fill this in on your homework. The length is how long the prism is. This edge right here is the length. The width is how wide it is. This one right here is the width. And the height is how tall it is. So fill these in, pause if you need to, and I'm going to move on to a couple of examples. Here we have some rectangular prisms. So if you look at these, I'm going to fill in some numbers on this one. I always want you to remember to write length times width times height anytime you see the word volume so you don't confuse it with area. So anytime you see the word volume, write down the formula. Even if you think you know it, it's a good practice to have because sometimes you get in stressful situations and you might forget. So the length is five. Here's our length. The width is three. And our height is four. So I like to break it down by two numbers at a time. So five times three, we know what five times three is, that is 15. And then we're going to do 15 times four. And I'm gonna give you a second to figure out what 15 times four is. Okay, it's 60. And that's 60 inches. When we do the units of measurement for volume, it's always going to be cubic inches or cubic feet. Whatever we use, it's going to be cubed. Because with a volume, you can fill this shape. Pretend like this was a tissue box. You can fill it up all the way with different cubes. And each cube, you can pull them out and count them, and it should equal 60 if these were the correct dimensions. Okay, here's another one. You're gonna write length times width times height. On this one, I'm gonna make this one three feet by four feet by one foot. So, again, the length is 3, the width is 4, and the height is 1. So, I'm going to break it down. 3 times 4, which that is 12, and 12 times 1. And that is going to be 12, I'm going to write feet, and it's going to be cubed. Okay, here are two more examples. So I'm gonna write again at the top, length times width times height. I'm going to do seven times four times three. Seven times four, everybody should be able to do that, so I'm gonna give you a minute. That's 28. Then you're gonna do 28 times three. What is that? That's 84. And that's going to be cubic meters. Last example, 6 times 2 times 4. Length times width times height. So 6 times 2 is 12. And 12 times 4 is going to be 48 centimeters and it's going to be cubic centimeters. Now, I want to make sure that you are practicing writing down your unit of measurement. One thing that I am going to go back and review that I did not give you an example of is what happens if it's a cube. How do you find the length, width, and height of a cube if it only gives you one? So, let's pretend like it gave us two. Well, you're going to still do length times width times height.
times height. But on a cube, all the sides are going to be the same. So you're just going to do 2 times 2 times 2. And 2 times 2 is 4. And 4 times 2 is going to be 8. And that's going to be cubic inches. So I wanted to give you that example for if, what if you have a cube and it only gives you one. If it's a cube, everything is congruent. Congruent means the same. So all you have to do is multiply each one of those numbers the same way. All right, I want you to watch this video as many times as you need to. Make sure you do your practice problems on here and turn in your homework on Friday because it's due. If you have any questions during this video, come in and ask myself or Mrs. Drake. Make sure that you're asking us questions because we want to make sure that you understand this. And remember, if you don't get it at home, we're going to reteach it all week next week in the class. Have fun, enjoy this, and know that there are going to be more flip videos coming. So have a great day and work hard.